Hi everybody, I'm Federico Battaglino and welcome to this uh, sixth and final webinar of VI Great Virtual Formula 2023. <clears throat> Today we are going to set up uh, the desktop simulator, learning how to use DriveSim and GraphSim and how they interact uh, with your car real-time model. So first of all, DriveSim and GraphSim. DriveSim is our software that handles the simulations with different steps of driving simulators, including your desktop simulator. GraphSim instead is one of the two graphical environments in which the simulation develops. To download and install DriveSim and GraphSim, uh, you can refer to the Getting Started guide in your download package that we have already seen, and obviously you will have to access uh, the software download part uh, or your uh, reserved area on our website. So we can start uh, with the process. The first step is still in carrier time, as you can see, and consists into the model preparation for DriveSim. Um, I'm just now in uh, the build mode for a moment because uh, <clears throat> I want to assess something that is fundamental. If you want to include any sort of control system in your driving simulations, we ask you to generate the auxiliary subsystem as I showed you in a previous webinar. Adding it to the car real time model here, as already explained. Please remember to include the subsystem XML file and the DLL file during the submission. Uh, the ones that I showed you that are produced within the folder automatically created by uh, the solver plugin process. So please pay attention on that. Okay, after that, we can pass to the test mode and add to our fingerprint a new event. We go at the bottom in the external folder and we add the, the drive sim event. Okay. So, first of all, for what regards the VI drive sim uh, uh, files path, I suggest you avoid modifying it. So this event output file will be created directly on your working directory. And it will be simpler for you to find it and also deliver to us if necessary. Then you must switch on uh, the user VDF file here and select here the uh, drive sim VDF file present in your database, this one here. Perfect. At this point, we have just to set up uh, the truck, so down here. Uh, as a raw data file, I select the race truck 2023.rdf found in your database. And then I have to switch the lap sensor path to user defined. And here I have to put again from your database, the race truck 2023.drd. This is necessary to register uh, your lap time and also uh, to use uh, the function of lap time since uh, here you have uh, the begin and the end of uh, the track, uh, and it will record uh, where you will when you will pass uh, uh, at the starting line, basically. So please remind uh, to do that. Uh, we can save the event, and once uh, this is done, I can run the event, uh, and my model pre preparation is uh, completed. Mind that every time you change your vehicle model in any way you must run again uh, this event to update uh, the send as VM file that is generated in this way. You should remember what a send underscore SVM file uh, is. Okay, after that we must do another step before passing to DriveSim. Uh, in your download package here you should find this folder VF car. This folder contains uh, uh, different graphical files uh, that will be necessary for GraphSim to reproduce a standardized Formula Student vehicle. So please unzip it um, and then we can copy this folder 
to uh, the installation folder of GraphSim. If you left the default settings while uh, installing uh, the software, you should find it in your C local disk under VI grade in VI, VI GraphSim. Here we can enter into the assets and then in cars. And here you have to paste your folder. Then we can go back to the starting pack. And also, um, again, in this, in this folder, we should find this uh, .txt file. This contains uh, the informations uh, related uh, to the positions of the cones uh, on the track that determine uh, the, the visual graphics uh, for uh, the track you will use in, uh, in your driving simulations. So also this must be copied within the graph sim folder assets, but this time into tracks. This is not mandatory, but I think that could be simpler for you to find it uh, when you will need that. So um, at this point, um, I just want to open this folder to show you that within it, uh, you can see different material files and 3D objects files. Uh, if you want, uh, you have the possibility to add your rear vehicle graphical files um, to uh, the drive, drive sim environment to uh, let uh, GraphSim reproduce it. Um, you should uh, be able to generate those files uh, thanks to, uh, for example, software as Blender, which is free. Uh, and you can take inspiration regarding uh, which kind of files you will need uh, and their format in this uh, uh, folder. Your vehicle must also include uh, these WAV files uh, that are used for the sounds of simulation of the vehicle. Before launching DriveSim, I just wanted to show you uh, this page of uh, the help of DriveSim. Uh, in the, this is the path to look for this page. Uh, this shows uh, uh, what hardware is compatible with DriveSim and GraphSim. In general, uh, only the G29 or G920 Logitech steering wheels are compatible, while there is a slight wider choice using uh, Fanatec hardware. So we can pass now to DriveSim. This is the GUI. And first of all, I want you to go and open the settings. You must click here on the network adapter. Okay. Um, and select your uh, PC one. Do not select the loopback pseudo interface, this one, uh, because it uh, will not work. Uh, in the logging page, you have to switch on the logging. Okay. And finally, in the licensing page, if, uh, if it's not present, uh, you will have to uh, write what you have written while inserting your uh, license server uh, path during the installation of the software. So you should have written this uh, so uh, you can repeat what I did. Okay, we can close here. Um, you must right click on it and select Add Process, and in particular, the GraphSim one. Okay, I have already done that, so uh, you can simply click on OK, depending on the resolution of your, um, of your uh, screen, obviously, and set OK. So, Okay, so you must right click on it, click on add process, graph sim, and once you have inserted the correct uh, uh, description of your uh, screen, uh, it should be automatic actually, uh, but if you want to change it, you are allowed, uh, you can simply click on okay, and now we are ready. Um, the, last, the last thing to do in this page, is to add a new configuration, clicking on this green cross. 
the name can be what you want. You have to flag graphs in process as uh, included and uh, click simply on OK. I can leave this name or even change it to whatever. OK, I can click on save. And so for what regards this page, we have finished. Uh, with this procedure, our PC will deal with the graphical interface of GraphSim during our simulation, basically. So it will be also our graphical machine. We can pass to simulation. In the upper part uh, here, you have the possibility to select uh, the configuration if you have more than one. Uh, now we have only one, so it is selected as default one. Uh, selecting the graphs in process, uh, uh, this additional part appears. Uh, uh, you cannot actually interact uh, with that right now uh, because we haven't launched uh, the graphs in process already. We will do that later when it's necessary. So here in the left part, uh, you have the test list and the only one you have to select is the USB input one, this one. To select a test, you just click once on the test and please pay attention on that because uh, passing to the configuration page, uh, which is dependent on which test is highlighted, that can will change and uh, our simulation could not be properly working, basically because you will need something more if you select the other ones uh, other than simply your PC, your model and your uh, steering wheel. So please mind uh, to have this highlighted before passing to the configuration page, but also before launching the simulations. Okay. At this point, uh, we can pass to the configuration page. We check that the USB input test is highlighted. Okay. Um, we can actually check um, that the USB input is the, the test selected here on the top of the GUI. So we are now okay. First of all, we can uh, uh, configure it. Uh, the HW map uh, and in this part uh, we select uh, USB steering wheel. Um, selecting USB steering wheel, the rest of these boxes uh, must remain uh, empty. You click on save if you have the possibility. Now we have to click here on edit. Okay. Uh, this uh, will be necessary to modify the um, steering response of your uh, steering wheel hardware. So, drive sim, output, cockpit, steering wheel, and here at the bottom we have the, we have the torque multiplier. If you are using a Logitech steering wheel, you must set the torque multiplier at 0 0.3. Instead, if you have a Fanatec, you can put this value up to 1. If the steering torque is too high, in this case, you can either modify this value, change your Fanatec settings, or <laughs> improve your vehicle model, reducing the steering torque. I take this moment to remember to you to check deeply the steering torque of your model during the offline simulations. The VA driver can work without any problem even if the calculated steering torque has no meaningful values since uh, that is an output of the simulation it doesn't use. Your real driver instead will for sure feel the problems uh, with that and there is also the possibility that the driving simulations fail due to the reaching of the steering torque limits. So please pay a particular attention on that. Please. So uh, we can click on save if we have modified something and we can close uh, this uh, page. At this point we can pass to IUDB underscore UDP and we must put inside the local IP address uh, 
the same IP address you have set as network adapter in the settings before, uh, please check that your multi multicast group is 225.1.1.1 and that the multicast port is 39766. This is really important for the communications. Click on save at the end of this process. Okay, we can pass now to the IODB underscore CSV page. This is necessary to log the results of your simulations. You will need to send us these logs so uh, in the future. So pay attention on that. Here we simply have to select the prefix CSV um, file folder here. So um, select and put what you prefer. And we also have to select CSV in the login mode here. Again, you can click on save to uh, update uh, and record your modifications. At this point, we can go back to the simulation page. We can now launch GraphSim, clicking on it and clicking on this green button. It will take a while, but then it will start. I'm using a single screen now to record this video, so I will have to close it to pass back to DriveSim to continue working on it. So I'll simply have my GraphSim process here in background. Okay. In uh, the track list here, uh, you have to select the proving ground and click on load. And for what regards the object file, you have to select that uh, racetrack uh, .txt file that I showed you before. So assets, tracks, and here you have the file. Again, this is necessary to uh, have the cones uh, and so the track layout uh, on your proving ground, which is actually a uh, big squared <laughs> road, simply. Uh, then in the cars list, if you have correctly put uh, your VF car folder in the cars uh, uh, folder within assets of GraphSim, at the bottom of this list, you should find your VF car. And if you obviously have changed uh, this with your personal files, uh, if everything is correct, you should find it. So um, as multicast group, again, as before, we have to put 225.1.1.1. And in the source EP address, we have to put what we put before. So our local EP address. And we can click on apply, load, load, load. Okay, so at this point, sorry. Okay, so uh, the last passage that remains uh, before launching the simulation is to check that the solver type is VI carrier time. Uh, we have to uh, select uh, the vehicle model we created before uh, with the event uh, uh, of drive sim in real time. So we simply open here and we go into our working directory selecting that send underscore SVM uh, XML file. Um, since we have correctly uh, defined uh, the event uh, earlier, we can leave uh, the road model as model defined but we have to change the initial position to override and we have to put as y position uh, 120 meters we can click on save to conclude and at this point we should be ready to launch the simulation i will actually have to change my setup to do so so i'll catch you later Okay, so as you can see, I slightly changed my setup just to show you a quick simulation uh, 
and also the graphical environment of GraphSim. So I loaded all uh, uh, my data and uh, my model and now I can simply start a simulation. You will see uh, the login begins here in the bottom part uh, and here on top uh, you can see the status of the simulation. When the simulation begins it is set as pause uh, as default and then simply clicking on the starting button on your um, steering wheel you will be able to let the simulation start. With the pause button you uh, can obviously um, pause the simulation but clicking uh, more than once on that button you can also um, rewind the simulation returning to a previous uh, sector. So and everything seems to be good so I can pass to GraphSim and I can start a simple simulation. Uh, this PC on which I'm simulating is not so powerful so maybe it could lag a bit but it's just to see uh, and show you the environment. And this is just part of the track uh, you will face uh, during uh, the online phase uh, of the virtual formula. So with the blue and red cones. To stop a simulation, I go back to Drive Sim and I click on this red button. To conclude, you will find the CSV output files in the corresponding folder of GI Drive Sim um, installation folder. Uh, so please uh, check that everything works. Now that's it from my side. I want to thank you for the participation at this webinar but mostly at this series of webinars for the VI Grade Virtual Formula 2023. I hope you will enjoy this year's competition. Please uh, interact with us and uh, with the other teams on the Discord channel where you will find the needed help and support. Thank you so much again and goodbye.